Hi everyone, welcome to the talk. Be forewarned that today's subject matter is serious in nature and involves the topic of suicide. With me is Andy Turner of Paulding County. Andy is here along with members of his family to talk about the story behind his new book, Who Turned Up the Silence? Six years ago, Andy lost his wife Heather and has since been in a heart-wrenching fight for justice. This is the first time the Turners have spoken publicly about what happened on the morning of May 4th, 2017 and about how unsubstantiated accusations about Andy's involvement have affected them all. So first of all, welcome Andy and family. Thank, thank you. you. So glad that you guys are here today and thank you for trusting me with your story. Um, I finished reading your book last night and it answers a lot of questions that have been out there in the world and I think that it, it's gonna be an important read for anyone who's following the case and even for those who aren't, um, it's a collaborative telling, not only from your own voice, but of your children as well. So family is really important to you, right, Andy? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The family's the most important thing for me. It always has been. That's the way I was raised. Yeah. And uh, the only way this story could be told is for the entire family to tell it. Would you be willing to introduce us to your lovely children or some of them? A absolutely. Uh, this is my, my daughter, Lexi. This is my oldest son, Austin. I do have two boys that are also authors in the book that are not here. Uh, they're, they're not fans of putting their, their face and, and talking in front of people. They're, one of them's more introverted and the other one just you know, doesn't like the attention. But I have a 18 year old uh, named Caden mm -hmm. and a 16 year old named Bronson. Uh, they were very active in this and uh, also extremely affected by the story as well. What do you do these days? I mean, um, how do you keep yourself busy? Well, the, the majority of, of my focus right now has been uh, working on this book mm -hmm. and, uh, and being dead. Uh, yeah. uh, I've, I've been dealing with uh, some sickness. Uh, mm -hmm. So with, with that and, and, and being able to do this has been the, the majority of my time. So it's been six years. And as I mentioned before, you guys have not spoken about this publicly. Um, but certainly other people have spoken oh, yes, about it. And we're, we're going to get into that. But Lexi, I know that you love volleyball. Yes, ma'am. So, what team are you playing on right now? Are you playing on a team right now? Yes, ma'am. I just got on the high school Cedar Town Bulldog volleyball team. That's interesting. That's good. Is that a good team, Dad? Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she, she made the squad. There was like 77 girls uh, trying out. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of those girls were... Uh, that were, were fantastic, amazing mm -hmm. athletes. And I watched my little girl go out there and... <laughs> she was hustling, and uh, I was like, "Man, I'm, I'm not sure she's gonna make it." But uh, but she did. She worked re real hard, and, uh, and and she made the team. She got a fantastic coach, a great program, and mm. looking forward to uh, to what they're gonna do with her. That sounds fun. And Lexi, you also like to act a little bit, right? Yes, ma'am. Getting your feet wet with that, son? Yes, ma'am. You have some prog projects in the pipeline right now. I do. I have one called Wear Sweet. Mm -hmm. And that is where you are. You a lead? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is that the volleyball story that you're mm -hmm. working? No? Mm -hmm. I have a soccer movie as well. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is it kind of like a lifetime thing or? It's a, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see that. Um, and Austin. Yes, ma'am. What have you been up to these days? Like, I've been traveling a lot for work. I'm a traveling contract mechanic, so I've done that. I've got other stunt driving um, jobs in the pipeline, but it's not really pressing right now, but doing both. So Austin likes to act and stunt drive and do a lot of things with cars, right? Yes, ma'am. If you read the book, you'll learn that this family really loves their cars. Oh, yes. How many cars do you guys have? 18 right now. That's pretty cool. And you have a nice um, enclosure, a garage, air condition, and it's just kind of like an extension of your family, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That was our therapy. Right after Heather died, we started restoring cars. And mm -hmm. uh, it was time that we could get out there together and, uh, and, and work and uh, it was therapy for us. We, mm -hmm. And it was something to do to occupy our mind and, uh, and work on the cars. And, and that's uh, something that we'll probably always do. And hopefully that the kids will take it when I'm gone. So when we return after this short break, we'll talk about the morning you found Heather in your home. So guys, stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States with over 5 million cases diagnosed each year, yet it is one of the most preventable? Hi, I'm Courtney Johnston, the physician assistant at Dalton Plastic Surgery. Did you know we offer routine skin checks in our office? 
Schedule your appointment with us if you have any areas of concern or if you have not had a recent skin exam. At Dalton Plastic Surgery, we offer an array of different services to help you feel and look your very best. Give us a call today. Do you have a new home project? Come to West Yellow Knife. We've been providing doors, windows, flooring, and unfinished cabinets for four decades. We have new, unique, and exclusive items weekly at a price you can afford. Let our friendly staff assist and point you in the right direction. West Yellow Knife, conveniently located right off of I-75 at 2226 Chattanooga Road, Dalton, Georgia. Come let us make the job easier and make your dream home complete. Hey guys, I'm Shane Franks and uh, today we're here to discuss seafood, one of my favorite topics. We're here at the Juicy Seafood, conveniently located on Walnut Avenue in front of Walnut Square Mall. Juicy Seafood started off in Alabama and they have uh, spread all through the South because everybody cannot get enough of their food. They have their own unique seasonings exclusively to them that they make and their food is made to order right there on the spot. They also pride themselves in their friendly staff. So if you're wanting something a little bit different, maybe you're tired of burgers, come try the Juicy Seafood. Do you have a finicky feline? Here at Dalton Veterinary Practice in Kitty Corner, we have a unique cats only waiting area that'll take some stress off of your trip to the vet. Our office has a completely separate waiting room for both dogs and cats. We are conveniently located on Cleveland Highway. We offer wellness and urgent care appointments for both dogs and cats, Monday and Tuesday, eight to five, and Wednesday through Friday from eight to eight. Call 706-281-4770 to make your appointment today. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa, los hombres no lloran. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, OK? Welcome back to the talk. I'm here today with Andy Turner, um, the author of the new book, Who Turned Up the Silence, as well as his daughter, Lexi, and his son, Austin. Andy, your story, your book, the story in your book, does not begin with your wife, Heather's death. But for the sake of time, let's start with the night before it happened. Were there any red flags that evening? Any signs that something might be wrong or different? Not at all. Uh, one thing about Heather, um, there was... Never a time where she was not happy. Mm. Um, anytime she walked into a room, she lit it up. She had a personality that was much bigger than her. Mm -hmm. And um, for a long time after her death, uh, with the education that I have, uh, I questioned myself on there had to be a red flag. There had to be something. And I failed my wife because I, I, I didn't see it. I missed something. And I've gone back and I've asked myself that question many times, but there was nothing that I ever caught, nothing that I ever saw because she was always so, so happy and, mm -hmm. and everything was perfect. And I would have told you up until the detective started bringing me information that we had a perfect marriage. It was a postcard. Mm -hmm. I was extremely happy in, uh, in, in loving my wife and, and the family as we were content. And, uh, I, on that last night that we had, the, the chapter in the book is titled, If I'd Only Known. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember her writing me, said, hey, baby, I, and I have the text messages that will be in the very last chapter of the book. There's nothing but our, our text messages for the last month. Mm -hmm. And she said, I, I want to cook your favorite meal. And uh, she asked what we had. And, man, I was excited because uh, Heather could cook. And... Uh, the whole pr the whole plan was uh, for for her to come in and and, and fix the dinner, and uh, if I had only known, that night would have been different. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you you hear people say, "Well, don't the family 
d deserve to, to know what happened. Well, mm -hmm. the, the family knows exactly what happened. Yeah. You know, they, we, we, there, there's no doubt. We know. We have the information. Mm -hmm. uh, the other people out there, they claim that they have the facts. Don't. And we address that in the books and, and what it is. But uh, that, that, uh, that, that last day, that, the day that we had together was a fantastic day. So and, tell me a little bit more about it. After you had your favorite meal, which was lamb chops? No. Pork chops? No, I'm, I'm a country boy. Salmon. Yeah. I, I had salmon, <laughs> salmon and biscuit mm -hmm. and gravy and, and cantaloupe. And, mm -hmm. uh, and she had a little, little chef that, uh, that mm -hmm. helped her prepare it. You want to tell that story? She came home and she was really, like, really excited to cook for him. And we, she got into the kitchen and I wanted to help. So I started helping her. And we rolled out the dough and did all the the salmon patties. Mm -hmm. And we brought it to the table and we sat down with Dad and she fixed him his plate because she always fixed him his plate. That was her her thing. She was a nurturer. She, oh yeah. Mm -hmm, she liked it. And we ate. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed our our meal. And let's see, you would have been eight at this time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So after the meal. Yeah. What? Um. I got up and I started putting the, the dishes in in the sink, and she jumped on my back. And uh, being silly, which was very common in her house, so we have a very playful household, and, and I always have. And when she jumped on my back, I just started prancing around the island in the kitchen and was, was giving her a ride and was being loud and silly and went around the kitchen and then... In our, our house is very long, so I went all the way into the dining room and down into the living room and turned. And when I looked up, she's standing there, and, and she's filming and, and taking photos and and uh, of her parents, mm -hmm. of her parents loving each other mm -hmm. and, and having fun. Sure. And uh, it was a, it was a great night. And and uh, when I come back up and. You know, she's acting like she's a cowgirl, you know, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, look, I, I'm, I'm not a very good horse. I got, I got a bad back. You're, you're breaking it. But, you know, if I'd only known, I, I would have rode a little bit longer. You know, I'd have, I don't know, a few more laps. Sure. And uh, we'd have kept going. When, uh, when you think back and, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and you know that you're about to lose your best friend and, mm -hmm. and your wife and the love of your life. You know, those aches and pains don't quite mean as much. Yeah. Uh, but that night was a beautiful night. And uh, when uh, when it was over, we sat down and she'd fixed a, a glass of wine. And then Lexi wanted to do some pottery because uh, she's a little artist. <laughs> and uh, we sat and watched her on her little potter's wheel. And and uh, she made art. And, uh, and I remember Heather saying, look at this little monster we created. <laughs> and uh, she's over there making a mess. And. And uh, it was just, it was a fun night. Mm -hmm. And um, and she created that night to be perfect. You know, and, and I've thought back on how meticulous she was on making the night so mm -hmm. perfect. With your meal and then the family interaction and everything like yeah, that. And we sat down and watched TV and uh, Lexi fell asleep on the couch. We was watching uh, TV in, in the living room. She didn't normally sleep there. And um, once she fell asleep, we decided just to let her rest and not pick her up and carry her upstairs. Mm -hmm. We went into our bedroom, and then, you know, that part of it, she she continued. You know, she made sure that that our time, you know, mm -hmm. husband and wife time was, was special. Was special. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if I'd only known, she did. Mm -hmm. She knew what the plan was, but uh, to me, I was just thinking, I'm the luckiest husband in the world. You know, I've got this beautiful family, these great kids, this wonderful, beautiful wife, and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what what a great life I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just soaking this up like a sponge. And uh, I had no idea that life was about to change, and change in the most god awful of ways. Austin, yeah. you were not home that night. It was just the three of you. But do you have any thoughts? I think people don't understand that she took preparation to make this decision. And we didn't have preparation to deal with the decision that she was going to make. Um, she knew that she was going to make something rash. Mm -hmm. She allowed them to have a great night. 
but he lost a wife. We lost a mom. And people don't care to understand that. People don't think about how it affected us. Um, the next morning, can you tell us what happened? Yeah. Uh, I fell asleep in the wee morning hours. The last thing I remember before was that she pulled my hand up on hers like this and she took a photo on her phone. I was holding it. And I was laying on her back. And, I was, and then I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I'm on the far side of the bed. And I'm awoken abruptly with a, with a noise. And you know, when you you're first wake up you don't you know you don't have all of your, your senses mm -hmm. you know? so i wake up i hear a noise and i think you know what was that and i realize she's not there and we have a, a stack in our shower uh one of those spring things that's got shampoo and everything on it and i thought well maybe she's failing and she's not that over i take off around the bed and i'm gonna go make sure she's all right and when i do lexi had got up from the couch and she's running, and we meet at the bathroom door at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I push the door open, and we're both going in. And then I realized the noise that I heard was not the falling of the shampoo and the stuff, mm -hmm. because the way the bathroom was, there's a there's a sink and a counter, and I can see over, and I, I see the top part of Heather's body. You share what you saw. Walked in and I just saw the bottom part of her legs on mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. We're going to share some more. When we return, we'll listen to the 911 call. Stay with us. Did you know skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States with over 5 million cases diagnosed each year, yet it is one of the most preventable? Hi, I'm Courtney Johnston, the physician assistant at Dalton Plastic Surgery. Did you know we offer routine skin checks in our office? Schedule your appointment with us if you have any areas of concern or if you have not had a recent skin exam. At Dalton Plastic Surgery, we offer an array of different services to help you feel and look your very best. Give us a call today. Hey guys, I'm Shane Franks, and today I'm here with Sarah from Blanca's Furniture. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. Well, tell me a little bit about this place. This is Blanca's Furniture and Appliances. Um, we've been here for about 15 years. You've got more than one store too, don't you? We have two, three locations, two in Dalton and one in East Ridge. We do have living room suits, bedroom suits, dining room, all kinds of different appliances to come and choose from. We do offer financing. We have three different companies that you can choose for for financing. Well, there you go, guys. If you want some furniture and you're looking at redoing your house, come to Blanca's Furniture. This is our Dalton, one of the fastest technology-driven gig cities in the country, thanks to OptiLink. We're making things happen with lightning fast internet. With OptiLink and its cutting edge fiber technology, you get unsurpassed bandwidth for the entire family with super fast speeds for all of your devices, keeping you up to date on the latest trends and dance moves. Never missing a moment with family, work from anywhere for a life well lived. Speeds beyond your imagination. Speeds that move your life forward. Go big, get the gig from OptiLink. At First Franklin Financial, we make loans for living, offering personal loans from $600 to $15,000 with fixed rates, flexible terms, and payment plans to fit any budget. And with same-day approvals, you can get your money right away. The next time you need a little financial help, First Franklin Financial is here for you. Visit 1FFC.com to learn more. so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa los hombres no lloran. You alright? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. 
whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Welcome back. I'm here with Andy Turner, the author of the new book, Who Turned Up the Silence. Andy is joined by his daughter, Lexi, and his son, Austin. Before we went to break, uh, we were talking about how Andy and Lexi had found his wife and her mother, Heather. Um, so I'm going to pick back up with you, Lexi. Um, what happened after your dad and you met at the door? You went in, you saw what you saw, and then what? He grabbed me and we fell back and he's crying. So he picks me up and he takes me to the couch and he says, don't move. Mommy's hurt, don't move. So then he starts doing all his phone calls and people start coming. That's right. So Andy, there has been some speculation about why you, or what you should have done, especially in regards to your decision to call your parents before calling 911. Can you walk me through the process of what happened at that point that morning? Absolutely. Uh, first, nobody knows what they're going to do until you're there. Mm -hmm. Until you see somebody you love in that, that position, you have no mm -hmm. idea what you're going to do. Um, on that particular morning, um, once I had identified what had happened, and I didn't want Lexi to go around that corner and see her mother in that full condition. Mm -hmm. She had already seen enough. And when I fell back in the floor and I'm holding her, I'm trying to hold it together. Mm -hmm. And I pick her up and I take her to the couch and I set her on the couch and I was like, do not get off this couch. Because I was afraid when I was in there with Heather that she would come back in there. So I said, do not move. So the first thing was I wanted to get my daughter taken care of because she's not hurt. And I don't want her to be hurt and damaged anymore by what she's already seen. So I called my parents and I said, mom. My mom answered the phone. I said, I need you to get here right now. Heather shot herself. Mm -hmm. I need you to get here as quick as you can. Lexi's on the couch. And then I immediately called 911. From when I talked to the detectives, that entire delay was a minute and I think it was sure. 18 seconds. And your family lived very close by. They did. They're, they're only like just a, a few miles down the road. Mm -hmm. I go in, I call 911. And I'm now beside Heather. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing everything that I can to try to save her. At that point, did you still think there was some hope? I never gave up hope. Sure. But when I was you know, looking at, I mean, I realized there was probably not much. Yeah. But I wasn't going to not try. Right. right. And I've, I don't remember the 911 call. I don't remember it at all. I've gone back and, and heard it. And when I hear it, I know that's my voice. And and then I've learned what I said by, by hearing it. And then I hear myself even saying, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. Heather, wake up. Why did you do this? It has been said that at some point during the 911 call, you whispered the words, I killed her to your mom. Um, I want to hear your response to these allegations, but first, I, I think we should play part of that 911 call. We're located in the house, Andy. We're, we're in a bedroom. Our shower's just finished. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
just listened to part of the 911 call. I'm just going to ask you point blank. Did you say I killed her to your mom? Absolutely not. And not only is it extremely clear that I didn't, um, you know who else knows that I didn't say that? Well, who? the FBI's went through this, mm -hmm. the GBI, mm -hmm. the Secret Service, mm -hmm. and the Sheriff's Department with all of their equipment. Sure. They've evaluated this with their experts. Mm -hmm. And if I had said that, you know where I wouldn't be sitting right now? Right here. Right here. When the experts go through and they examine it and they find nothing, but people on hate sites, that's what they hear. Well, of course, that's exactly what they hear, but that's not what's said. If you listen to the 911 tape, you can hear that it's splotchy. And my phone in the bathroom had awful reception and it's mm -hmm. cutting in and out. And you weren't being still, I'm sure. Oh, no. I'm, I'm doing active CPR on my wife. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to save her. Mm -hmm. And my mom came in. The best thing that I can remember saying was, Mom, I could not save her. And that's what they want to turn into, Mom, I killed her. But what? here's what I'm thinking, Andy. Just like you said, if you said that, I they be have the technology to hear that. Absolutely. And I'm sure that people come through it, and especially with the pushing back from certain people in the community, that would have been thoroughly examined, in my opinion. Oh, you know how many phone calls the Sheriff's Department was getting per day from these websites? Hundreds. Wow. Um, so after the 911 call and the authorities get there, um, I believe I've read that no one took gun residue from your hands, all kinds of things like that. What actually happened? Before I left that bedroom, as soon as, as, soon as I left Heather mm -hmm. and exited the bathroom into my bedroom, there was a wall of cops mm -hmm. in a semicircle that I walked into like, that it... held my hands mm -hmm. and immediately took gun residue. Mm -hmm. Immediately showed nothing. Or again, I wouldn't be sitting here. Sure. And then what? And then for about five hours that day, I sat through questioning. So it is, would you say that it is a false allegation that Andy Turner has not been questioned by the police? It's extremely false. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have photos of me naked. Mm -hmm. Because they, they checked your body for. If no. I would have, yeah, the, any defensive wound, you know, anything, you know, if I'd have been fighting, they made me stand there right after I had just saw my wife in that condition mm -hmm. and get completely naked yeah. and turn around and take photos of me. Yeah. That was very difficult. When I'm still looking at my wife and my best friend laying mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. and, and wondering yeah. what happened. How did this happen, right? Yeah, but the, not just that, but the things that they would say. And how smart ass that they were to me. Mm -hmm. And then one guy said, well, if we didn't get anything, check them again and go deeper. There's got to be something on there. Yep. And here I am, upset. Mm -hmm. And immediately, the moment that I walk out after this loss, I'm already enduring this from the Sheriff's Department. And then for five hours, I go through questioning. But when they left... Lieutenant Christopher said, this is a clear case of suicide. Okay. It's open and shut, and we're done. I give you my sincere condolences. And where is Lexi at this time? With your mother and father? She, mm -hmm. she had been moving around to different places, but they were 
about to move the body, they had taken photos and photos of the bathroom and me and the entire house, but we didn't want her to see her mom be carried out. Mm -hmm. So she went upstairs, and I know the medical examiner was up there, Lindsay Eberhardt, and my mom, because um, we didn't want her to witness that. Sure. So, Lexi, I'm just going to ask you this question. Do you have any doubt in your mind that, what your dad is saying and what you're remembering, remembering is inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Everything he's saying is completely true. Mm -hmm. There's not anything that's wrong. There's not anything that's tampered with. It is all factual. Mm -hmm. And you were there. Yes, ma'am, I was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we return, we'll hear more from Austin and Lexi and Andy about their experience um, of losing a wife and a mother and the things they have had to endure since that day. So stay with us. Did you know skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States with over 5 million cases diagnosed each year, yet it is one of the most preventable? Hi, I'm Courtney Johnston, the physician assistant at Dalton Plastic Surgery. Did you know we offer routine skin checks in our office? Schedule your appointment with us if you have any areas of concern or if you have not had a recent skin exam. At Dalton Plastic Surgery, we offer an array of different services to help you feel and look your very best. Give us a call today. Do you have a new home project? Come to West Yellow Knife. We've been providing doors, windows, flooring, and unfinished cabinets for four decades. We have new, unique, and exclusive items weekly at a price you can afford. Let our friendly staff assist and point you in the right direction. West Yellow Knife, conveniently located right off of I-75 at 2226 Chattanooga Road, Dalton, Georgia. Come let us make the job easier and make your dream home complete. Hey guys, I'm Shane Franks, and uh, today we're here to discuss seafood, one of my favorite topics. We're here at the Juicy Seafood, conveniently located on Walnut Avenue in front of Walnut Square Mall. Juicy Seafood started off in Alabama, and they have uh, spread all through the South because everybody cannot get enough of their food. They have their own unique seasonings exclusively to them that they make, and their food is made to order right there on the spot. They also pride themselves in their friendly staff, so if you're wanting something a little bit different, maybe you're tired of burgers, come try the Juicy Seafood. Do you have a finicky feline? Here at Dalton Veterinary Practice in Kitty Corner, we have a unique cats only waiting area that'll take some stress off of your trip to the vet. Our office has a completely separate waiting room for both dogs and cats. We are conveniently located on Cleveland Highway. We offer wellness and urgent care appointments for both dogs and cats, Monday and Tuesday, eight to five, and Wednesday through Friday from eight to eight. Call 706-281-4770 to make your appointment today. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa, los hombres no lloran. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, OK? Welcome back to The Talk. I'm here with Andy Turner, Lexi Turner, and Austin Turner. Um, they have a new book coming out. It is called Who Turned Up the Silence? Um, you guys, you guys, not just emotionally and as a family have been through so much, but people are putting you through extra trauma. Honestly, am I correct? Oh, yes. Absolutely. 100% correct. And so a lot of things have, have happened. Do you want to share, Austin? Do you want to share something that's happened to your family? Sure. Since then? Absolutely. The first day that it happened, 
we didn't even get hours after the incident. And people at my school, people that I don't know from the public, already knew things that happened that morning before I did. People had the 911 tape and they were pushing it around social media. I had people texting me that I hadn't talked to in years, mm -hmm. asking if I would answer questions that they had. Just kids? Kids. Um, but we would go out in public and try to live some normalcy. Mm -hmm. We'd go to, to lunch, to the store, and people from all walks of life would walk out of nowhere and decide that they were experts on our lives. Mm -hmm. They were experts on, on the case. what happened mm -hmm. in our house, mm -hmm. like they knew us. So that was a constant battle. We couldn't eat in peace. We couldn't shop in peace. So, Lexi, what have you been through? A lot of bullying from defects. They have had almost, what, 120 calls in one day. Um, I've had them showing up at my school, questioning me, asking me if my dad's ever abused me, molested me, not fed me. And I kept telling them over and over that none of that happened. But they kept coming like day after day after day to the point where I had to change schools. Mm. They have hurt my dad, which that hurts me. Of I don't course. like seeing him hurt. Mm -hmm. That hurts the whole family because we are all one unit. We work together. And when one person is broken, the whole family is. So just seeing everybody else sad and hurting is the worst thing in the world mm -hmm. it hurt it adds further the, the defects that she's referring to was, was awful because people would use the system to bully and abuse us mm -hmm. when you're getting 120 calls a day and let, let me explain when we found out where they were coming from these were other states people that had that never met any of us and, and the, the folks on the website were putting these things out and, and private messaging people and they were calling defects reading a script Mm -hmm. and, and so we sat in and talked to the workers and they were asked, do you, do you know this person? And the majority of them would be anonymous callers. Mm -hmm. And uh, But when the calls come in, they still have to investigate. Sure. So they kept going to the school. And I'm like, well, you should come talk to me. Yeah. They kept going to the school and they kept pulling her out of class. Well, Heather's cousin was the principal there. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm, I'm being kind of ostracized of this and they're, they're singling out my daughter. Well, I had a lot of problem with that. And they kept singling her out. And I, I go pick her up from school and she's getting in the car. And she's like, Dad, the police are back today. And they're asking me this. And I'm like, seriously. And it just wouldn't quit. So then this, when that didn't get what they wanted, then they would move to, to the court system and the, the, the sheriff's department. And then people are getting hundreds of calls a day. And it's funneling through all these social media accounts. And people think that they're doing good, that they're saving the kids. And the kids are... Uh, and, and I'm sure that some of those people thought that they were doing well because they believe what somebody told them. But they had no idea the harm that they were doing and the, the, the hell they were putting our family through. Sure. And, uh, uh, and, and how bad that it became when we're waking up in the morning and murders rode across our, our garage door. And I think we're up to, what, 45 cut tires. Wow. Cars keyed. And people that we've gone out with being put in harm's way. Death threats. I've had to hire security to follow my children and needed it mm -hmm. on multiple occasions. Sure. And they've had to step in. So you're always, you probably always feel like you're being watched and being judged. Oh, we were. And, yes. And um, hmm. does this still go on today? Yes. Yes. Lexi, there was a time one Christmas. Um, can you tell us about the golf cart incident? We were on the golf cart riding in the neighborhood because that is our tradition. We go around and we look at Christmas lights every year. Mm -hmm. So we were riding around the neighborhood and we were in this one cul-de-sac and we were turning around and there were a lot of people. They had been drinking, obviously. Um, but we turned around and we were going out and Bubba was on a different golf cart. And this one lady made a comment. She said, isn't that the murderer? And we, me and dad and kelly were riding and we heard his tires squeal mm -hmm. so we look back and we stop the cart and he's getting out and he's walking towards his people and there's a lot of people screaming and a lot of people yelling and this woman is like profusely apologizing because he's upset like he doesn't want people calling him any names that are not true mm -hmm. 
So there's he gets out and he's trying to defuse the situation, trying to calm it down. And there's this man, he's yelling it, he's all in Austin's face, and he's like, You need to roll on. And a lot of people start walking out of their homes. <laughs> and there was this one woman, and I was standing back because I didn't want to get like involved in the big ruckus. So I'm standing there, and this woman in her driveway says, he murdered his wife. And I was like, are you serious? And she looks at me, and she goes, you need to watch cable TV. And I'm like, I was there. I know mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. um, now, Austin, can you tell us why you're here today and why it's important to you to be part of the process? It's not just my story. Mm -hmm. It's a family story. Mm -hmm. We all went through it together i was given the choice to be a part of this sure and i chose to be so if anybody is claiming to have any doubts on why i should be here you shouldn't have put it on us in the first place we wouldn't have a story if they didn't give us one what choice did she have with cops pulling her out and everywhere we go people coming up and saying anything mm -hmm. you know it's it's their life. Yeah. So now they're speaking out to defend and to set the record straight and to write the lies that's been told for six years. Why haven't you been arrested? Why is this still an open case? Um, well, I haven't been arrested because there was no crime committed. Uh, but exactly why the, this thing is open, uh, there, there, there's two avenues of that. One, I've been told twice, it's closed. The initial day, this is obviously suicide open and shut. She left a note. Mm -hmm. you know, and what did the note say? Uh, the note said, uh, I'm sorry, I love you. And Heather was notorious for leaving notes, right? She left me notes all the time. She mm -hmm. packed my bags anytime I was traveling. She put notes all in my clothes everywhere. She, mm -hmm. she liked to write notes. Sure. Uh, but she left that note. I still don't know all what she meant in that, what, mm -hmm. uh, what I'm sorry, I love you means mm -hmm. when you do something like that. But when you do something like that, you're not thinking with a clear mind, obviously. Sure. Um, but, but why is it open? Great question. Um, I was told directly by the, the lead detective, Mike Hill, who I've gone back and forth with. We've had some extremely harsh words that until I do exactly what he wants, it'll be open forever. And, and your story on that is in the book. It, it is will, definitely it in the book open. and extremely documented. Okay. Why, why would I do that and then allow them to try to do anything that would later harm me? Mm -hmm. If I had done wrong, there was any evidence of any wrongdoing, they would have arrested me by now. Mm -hmm. But there's not any. So why would I yield to that? Mm -hmm. And uh, number two is they're still getting hammered because you've got boyfriends and family members that don't want to let it die because they don't like the fact that they committed suicide. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We don't either. No. So, guys, when we come back, I'll be joined by your, your current wife, Kelly, yeah. and um, we'll talk about how the, medias and, uh, the media and other people have affected her life as well. So, stick with us. Did you know skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States, with over 5 million cases diagnosed each year, yet it is one of the most preventable? Hi, I'm Courtney Johnston, the physician assistant at Dalton Plastic Surgery. Did you know we offer routine skin checks in our office? Schedule your appointment with us if you have any areas of concern or if you have not had a recent skin exam. At Dalton Plastic Surgery, we offer an array of different services to help you feel and look your very best. Give us a call today. Hey guys, I'm Shane Franks, and today I'm here with Sarah from Blanca's Furniture. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. Well, tell me a little bit about this place. This is Blanca's Furniture and Appliances. Um, we've been here for about 15 years. You've got more than one store too, don't you? We have two, three locations, two in Dalton and one in East Ridge. We do have living room suits, bedroom suits, dining room, all kinds of different appliances to come and choose from. We do offer financing. We have three different companies that you can choose for for financing. Well, there you go, guys. If you want some furniture and you're looking at redoing your house, come to Blanca's Furniture. This is our Dalton, one of the fastest technology-driven gig cities in the country. Thanks to Optilink, we're making things happen with lightning-fast internet. 
With OptiLink and its cutting edge fiber technology, you get unsurpassed bandwidth for the entire family with super fast speeds for all of your devices, keeping you up to date on the latest trends and dance moves. Never missing a moment with family, work from anywhere for a life well lived. Speeds beyond your imagination. Speeds that move your life forward. Go big, get the gig from OptiLink. At First Franklin Financial, we make loans for living. Offering personal loans from $600 to $15,000 with fixed rates, flexible terms, and payment plans to fit any budget. And with same-day approvals, you can get your money right away. The next time you need a little financial help, First Franklin Financial is here for you. Visit 1FFC.com to learn more. so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa los hombres no lloran. You alright? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, OK? Welcome back to the talk. I'm here with Kelly Turner. She is married to Andy Turner and welcome. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being here to share your story. Um, can you tell me what kind of things you've had to endure as a direct result of the media's attention and focus on your husband? Immediately after Andy and I started dating, I was bombarded with phone calls, text messages, people reaching out on social media saying my life was in danger, I'm gonna be next, Andy is a murderer, I better watch out. And it was terrifying mm -hmm. at first. There are people I've never heard of, they're making threats, they're calling my friends and family. They were contacting people that I went to high school with that I hadn't spoken to in 10 years. Oh, wow. They're reaching out. They contacted my family and said that my life was in danger, my son's life was in danger, Andy's a murderer, I need to get away. They found out where I worked. They called my job. I tried to get me fired numerous times saying that I was dating a murderer and that no one in the office was safe if I had worked there. Did you get fired? No, I did not. Luckily, they, my bosses are intelligent mm -hmm. and smart and could read through all the malarkey that mm -hmm. is online. Just because you read it online doesn't mean it's fact. So my car tag was illegally ran. Only a police officer can do that. Mm -hmm. So obviously there is corruption somewhere in that line. My job was also posted because they weren't able to get me fired. So why not put that on there too? I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I had cars that were parked in front of my house that I didn't recognize. Of course, I called Andy in a panic. He told me to call the police, happened numerous amounts of times. I was so scared that I bought a professional alarm system. I added extra lighting, extra locks on my doors, and I bought a dog. I was scared to be at home at night alone with my son. Mm -hmm. I was scared to go to the store. I got hundreds of messages from people that I had never heard of. I couldn't recognize who had sent a message and who hadn't. So if I were to see somebody in the store and they look at me funny or for one second too long, I'm immediately on edge. Mm -hmm. It was terrifying. They were calling anyone and everyone trying to attack me just for dating Andy. Mm -hmm. And I was brokenhearted 
because if they were doing that to me, what were they doing to Andy? What were they doing to the kids? Mm -hmm. And the gravity and the turmoil that they cause and are still causing to this day is unfathomable. Really, I, I cannot wrap my head around how cruel people can be, especially when there's children involved. Mm -hmm. Going after an adult is one thing, but when you bring children into it, it completely changes the dynamic and it's absolutely disgusting. So at any time, were you in doubt? At any time, did you think that he might have done this? Absolutely not. So what kind of husband is Andy Turner? Andy is nothing short but amazing. He is romantic. He's loving, loyal, faithful, honest. Even if it's a hard truth, he will tell you. You always know where you stand. Um, he's silly, which I love. Mm -hmm. He's my best friend. Um, all the things that a woman dreams of in a husband is what I have. And I've never felt more appreciated, valued, respected, and loved in my entire life. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's good. And he's lucky to have you. Thank you. It sounds like you're very supportive and loyal and all those things right back. Um, well, Kelly, thank you for sharing today. Do you have anything you want to add? I'm ready to start a new chapter. Mm -hmm. We, as a family, are ready to start a new chapter. We finally get to break our silence, and it's been too long. Mm -hmm. So I'm very thankful for letting you come here and share a story. I'm excited about the book. I'm excited about what we have next. Mm -hmm. And we're really just excited for peace and to start a new beginning. Absolutely. And I wish that for you. I wish all of those things for you. Thank you. Now, when we come back, I will be wrapping things up with Andy. He's going to tell us a little bit about a, about the book coming up. And it, once again, it is called Who Turned Up to Silence? So stick around. Welcome back once again to the talk. I am back with Andy Turner. Hey, Andy. Hey, Connie. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for trusting me to share your family's story. I know it's been a hard journey for you and yes, for the family, and I only hope it gets much better. And this book is going to be, I think, a tool to, to make people, you know, hear more about what happened and, and who you are and who your family is and all that. The book, once again, is called? Who Turned Up the Silence. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way we chose the name was uh, was pretty unique. I think it, anybody who's ever gone through trauma can uh, can relate. You know, there's been times that uh, that tragic things have happened to you, and there can be noise go around. In this book, there's a lot of things that we're dealing with. You know, suicide, and then we're giving uh, to you know charities uh, you know, portions of this back to suicide prevention. We're we're dealing with with being bullied from social media. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of that in here. Um, corruptness from the court system, you know, and then the, the, the stamps on how dads have to deal uh, with just you know you going into the court system just a dad alone is difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and what it's like when you have an aftermath of tragedy right? and, uh, and how to heal. And also it's a journey of faith. You know, I was raised, um, uh, by, by a Baptist pastor mm -hmm. and, uh, and my faith is challenged in this, but you'll see that my children and, uh, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, if you raise your children in the way they should go, they'll not depart from it. I think of that verse a lot. If it would not have been for my children, I wouldn't have been able to turn and right. uh, so there, there's a lot that's in this book that you'll see the journey. No, really, no matter what walk of life, the walk of life that you come from, this book can speak to mm -hmm. you. And we hope that it helps a lot of people. I was quite surprised at how well or how good of a writer you are, because I didn't know that side of, of you. And it it's very enjoyable. Um, it's you know, it's a really good read. Well, thank you very much. I, I, I didn't know I was a writer either. I just knew. <laughs> well, now you know. I knew we had a story, mm -hmm. and uh, we wanted to we wanted to tell it. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of facts and a lot of truth in the book that we've not had a chance to to tell. But uh, if you read the book, you'll you'll see it. And uh, we've got a lot of documentation for people. Absolutely. So how can we get this book? Uh, you go to who turned up the dot com. Or you can go to colorfulcrowpublishing.com, dot com, mm -hmm. and uh, there are links to be able to pre-purchase it now. And then soon we're going to be in bookstores nationwide. Absolutely. And what is next for the Turner family? Well, uh, we're we're in pre-production for the movie. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we're pretty excited about that. We'll soon be doing uh, uh, the book tour, uh, multiple states. Um, and then once that's finished, what I hope is for the Turner family is some peace. Absolutely. I hope that too. Well, thank you, Andy, for joining us. The rest of you get that book and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Following extensive research on the death of Heather Turner, it is my belief that much of the controversy surrounding the case centers around the fact that the cause of Heather's death has been left marked undetermined for the past six years. In an effort to determine whose court the ball is in, I reached out to Paulding County's coroner, the Paulding County Sheriff's Department, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and the Paulding County District Attorney's Office. Lindsay Eberhardt is the Paulding County coroner. I first asked Lindsay if Heather's cause of death had been determined. She replied that the cause was known right off the bat. Heather died from a gunshot wound to the head. She is an elected official, the premier death investigator of unexpected deaths. With gunshot wounds, it is common practice to ask a medical examiner to perform, to perform an autopsy. An autopsy was performed on Heather Turner. Eberhardt said that when she went out to Heather and Andy's home on May 4th, 2017, her job was primarily to collect information for the medical examiner. She said she went into the Turner home with an open mind. She meticulously wrote down what was observed and what what was communicated to her. She maintains that she made no mistakes and that if she had the day to do over again, she would do nothing differently. While she was a relatively new coroner, she had been on the job for four months, and Heather's case was not her first case. Coroners do not collect or process evidence. Eberhardt said the GBI and Sheriff's Office processes evidence and the DA evaluates what testing results, etc., is there to determine if anything will be done from a legal standpoint. Once the body is removed from the scene, the coroner is no longer needed. Eberhardt said she takes her job as an elected official very seriously and there is no conflict of interest and there has been no cover-up. At this point, what happens next is up to the DA's office and the GBI. As coroner, her role in this case is closed unless the medical examiner's office overturns their ruling. The uproar following Heather's death, Eberhardt said, is that the case has never been ruled anything other than undetermined. Eberhardt said she is an honest and sincere person who would love nothing more than to have closure for the family and for the community. She does not know why the case has been left open. Nellie Miles, the Director of Public and Government Affairs with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, replied to me by email with the following statement. The GBI investigation is still open. There are no new updates to report at this time. Sergeant Ashley Henson, the public information officer with the Paulding County Sheriff's Department, immediately returned my call. Sergeant Henson said the case is still open and active. He said that since the incident, the Sheriff's Department and the GBI have worked on the case in conjunction along with assistance from the Paulding County District Attorney's Office. Henson stated that there are no additional updates that can be provided at this time. In a nutshell, he said, this case is highly controversial and highly debated in the community. Henson said he is not at liberty to go into the intricacies of the investigation, but wants viewers and citizens to know the case is not being taken lightly. Henson said that they can't take rumors and things like that to a judge and a jury. He said it is important to note that they can't make arrests or take people to jail unless they have probable cause. He asked that I please let the public know that they haven't given up that if it's truly suicide and they can prove it's suicide, they will close the case and everyone can move on. And he said if it's something else and there's evidence, then they will move forward with that route. Henson said there isn't enough facts and evidence to do anything but keep the case open. He wants the community to know Heather's life matters to him and the other men and women who have been assigned to this case. There are so many allegations out there, he said. The controversy is over who is being honest and who isn't. The Paulding County District Attorney's Office did not respond to my inquiries. Some people have asked why I didn't interview Heather's family. My answer to that question is, I did. Her daughter, her stepson, her husband. There have been a multitude of interviews with other members of Heather's family over the years. Their viewpoints are out there for everyone to see. Lexi's wasn't, Austin's wasn't, and I believe my interview with Andy goes into the details largely left out of his previous public commentaries. Whether you like it 
or you don't. In this blessed country we live in, innocent until proven guilty still applies. This has been one of the most heart-wrenching stories I've ever done for a number of reasons. It is my most sincere hope that there will be restored peace in the lives of everyone who loved and still misses Heather Turner. Thank you for watching.